Hello? Hello, Santos Party House. I want everyone in here to know that Andrew WK is getting ready. He's just preparing some last minute details, some last minute special things for you guys. So, you know, sit tight for a couple minutes and then he'll be all yours. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for joining me. Many of you in this room are my friends. Many of you in this room have spent time with me. Many of you have cheered for me, or have worked with me, or have supported me. I want to start by saying how grateful I am for your support and kindness. I am here today, I am here tonight to take your questions and I will answer them the best that I can. Some of the accusations and questions you've encountered may appear to be recent developments, but for me they have been around all too long. Questions started coming up right from the beginning of the release of my first album. I realize now that you I realize now that the way we chose to present myself and the the decisions we made as a team had long lasting impacts had long lasting impacts that none of us expected. Expected. We have we have been humble we have been humbled by this experience. Now I am trying to manage two sides of my life. I have commitments to, to both. I have commitments to both sides of my life. I have commitments to my business partners. I have commitments to my, my business partners and to my audience. I have made promises to both. And now I am dealing with the aftermath of making promises. <laughs> there, there are some aspects that I promised not to ever reveal. I have agreed to keep certain things private for the sake of the people I love and respect. And for the sake of Andrew WK in general. But I am here to try to answer everything I can. I have always been upfront about what I won't talk about. 
I understand people have questions. I understand the press wants to ask me for the details about my past and the origins of my career in the entertainment business. But I understand people want to know who I work with and who I work for. But please, please, but please know that as far as I'm concerned, every one of these questions and answers is a matter between my business partners and me. It's not out of disrespect for you, the press, or any of my fans. But, but, but rather out of respect for the Promises I made to my family and associates. Promises that if broken, promises that if broken will change my life in unimaginable ways. Some people have, some people have made up things that never happened. They said I was replaced by another person playing Andrew WK. This is completely and utterly false. Some have written things about my family and my father. Despite the, despite the damage, I believe it is right to shield these people from the public spotlight. From the public spotlight. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> despite the damage, I still believe it is right to shield these people from the public spotlight. They did not ask to be in this spotlight. I did. I did. I recognize I have brought this on myself. And I know above all, I am the one who made the decisions which have, who made the decisions which have brought me to where I am. I have a lot of work to do and I intend to dedicate myself to doing it. Finally, before I open this event, finally, before we open this event to general questions, there are many people in this room and perhaps at home who have believed in me. Today, I ask you to find room in your heart to focus on what really matters at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the joy and excitement that my brand of entertainment strives to bring. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you. Th thank you. Um, so that that is the end. That that concludes the. Pre written the that concludes my statement. I would now like to own oh, I would now like to open the floor to general questions. Tonight is an opportunity for us to talk together, for us to ask questions of one another, for you to ask me questions or and for me to do for you. For you to ask me questions and for me to do my best to respond to your questions tonight. Thank you for coming tonight and welcome. Thank you. So there is a microphone that we've provided for the crowd tonight. You'll find it here in the middle of the room and I ask that you either come up to the microphone or pass the microphone, no. pass the microphone around the room for anybody who would like to ask a question. If anybody has questions, the re remainder of tonight will be dedicated to me responding to those questions. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Hey, Andrew WK, how you doing? Uh, hello. Um, my question is, I'd like to know what you think about dark matter. Okay, great, yes. <laughs> uh, 
I gotta say, um, in all honesty, that's a real relief, that question for me. <laughs> to level with everybody here now that that's out of the way, I've been, what's the right word? I've been anticipating this night for quite some time. I've been nervous. I've been scared. I don't, uh, I don't want to admit, I, I have been anticipating this night for a long time and anticipating the types of questions that would come up once it was open to the open floor because as much preparation as I could do, as much as I could anticipate any particular question, that question is uh, in a different realm and <laughs> much appreciated, so thank you. Yes, dark matter, uh, dark matter, yes. This is some kind of... Uh, uh, a new approach in physics that looks to recognize the existence of a substance or a version of experience, as far as we're concerned, that we don't anticipate or predict or experience in any other regard except for the physics of dark matter. Part of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of my preparation tonight was learning how to answer questions in different ways. And sometimes when you are posed with a question that you might not know the answer to, you're encouraged to find a way to answer it regardless. And that is the answer I just gave. Yeah! Next question, yes, please. And feel free to take the microphone off the stand, pass it around, it's supposed it, to be open. It's cool, I'm right here. Why have you been so nervous and spent so much time preparing for this event tonight? Fair question, thank you. What's your name, sir? My name is Eric. We actually spoke on the phone once. I interviewed you for the morning news. Oh, okay. Yes, I just gave my, my book choice for the morning news today. I'm I so happy to know chose, that you're in the tournament of books this year. It's I chose, fantastic. yeah, Wolf Hall. It was Wolf Hall versus uh, the Night Women. Yeah. And I chose Wolf Hall. I, that's secret information. No. You shouldn't be saying that. <laughs> and thus, the theme of my life. <laughs> I am doing my best. I'm trying... Wait, what? I don't care, but... My, my first question, why have you been so nervous and spent so much time preparing for tonight? Well, tonight was originally booked because a, uh, there's a publication called The Aquarian. Has anybody here heard of The Aquarian? Jersey! Yeah! <laughs> Jersey! <laughs> That's right! Well, so anyway, the Aquarian had expressed interest to me and my team of publicists that they were wanting to do some kind of a story. And they said, because they're a local publication, local to the New York area, they asked that I would do some kind of local event. And we scheduled this open Q&A. And once the Q&A was scheduled, it became clear that this would be an opportunity to address not just the general questions that maybe a, a person has for a performer, but more unusual questions that had arisen over the last 10 years, as far as I'm concerned. And so tonight became what was originally going to be a, a kind of a, a fun night, a relaxed night. For me, it became something rather stressful. 
only because I'm the person that's on the stage, only because I'm the person that's been in the light, only because I'm the person who's been given the voice. But that's something that I, I, I agreed to, I signed up for a long time ago, and I'm uh, prepared to handle the responsibilities, the ramifications of this position, and I'm here to address you the best that I can, no matter what questions come up. So even if I was nervous, anticipating specific questions. I'm here with uh, a lot of preparation and a lot of readiness to, to deal with whatever anybody wants to ask me. Is that it? All right. Thank, thank, thank you. Uh, 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 okay, okay. You, you can pass the mic around. I mean, oh, I was gonna... it's, it's a long cable on the mic. Can I, can I do my... I'll give you... All right, cool. Oh, you can... Yeah. Well, well, you, can... Right. Oh, you can come up here. I'll give no. it to you after. Yeah. Okay. Well, if he... I... No. I'm asking a question. Uh, I'll give it to you. Okay. It, it... Hi. <laughs> this is supposed to be like town hall. A lot of my training has come from politics. A lot of what I've learned has come from the way that town hall meetings are operated the way that press conferences are operated. You want to make yourself available. You want to be present. For a lot of people here, tonight may seem like a, a, a new phenomenon. These questions are recent. For me, they're old hat. I mean, I've been dealing... <laughs> okay, not old hat. They're very valid questions that I'm trying to answer right now. But the fact is, I've been asked these questions before and I'm trying to find out the best way to answer them as time goes on. Ignoring them was a disaster. <laughs> I'm, I will stand up and say I was part of the reason it was, uh, I ignored these questions for a long time. I never, when I agreed to do this, I never agreed, I mean, when, I'm going back to like 1999, 2000 here. When I agreed to do this, I never, and I, I will, I can say very safely, no one anticipated this kind of reaction or this kind of questioning, this type of uh, doubt or, or this line of reasoning. I, no one had anticipated this, however you want to look at it. So now I'm here and I'm trying to do my best to address it and, and give the answers that are appropriate. And I'm open and I will take any questions. I just hope that people understand that a long time ago, I made promises to... I'm in between... Everybody here must have had parents. Everybody here... This is, this is not supposed to be funny. This, I, I'm trying to just get to the heart of it here, okay. Everybody here has had a father and a mother that made them, unless they're some kind of advanced test tube baby, or, yeah. So you're here, you're the product of some kind of life force, and I am as well. I guess the difference potentially between you and I is that the people that were involved in making me exist in a physical form were also involved in making me exist in a philosophical or literal form, uh, in every form other than physical. The, the point is, I made promises to people that are very close to me, to my close family members, to members of my business team, to close friends that became members of my business team. The, the point is, I made promises. I'm sure everybody here has at some point or another made a promise to someone in their life, whether it's a close friend or a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a family member, you made a promise. I made promises in 1999 when I signed up for this and I am going to hold to those promises for better or worse. I've held to them for better or worse. And the deepest part of me, the part of me that is not even Andrew W.K., the part of me that goes beyond whatever, the part of any of us that is beyond our name, beyond our occupation, beyond what we do, beyond our actions, the core of me has made promises to stay true to this vision. And I'm gonna do my best 
with that being said. So ask whatever you want and just it's an open floor and go ahead. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so your, your third album, Close Calls with Brick Walls, comes out a month from today, right? <laughs> yes, okay. So you had three other albums that were supposed to come out by 2008, Young Lord, The Carrier, and Eberwhite. So I was wondering what the status was with those, if they've already been written and recorded, if, they're, if you're planning to release them, or if they've been just completely scrapped. Thank you for that question. That's a very good question. Um, <laughs> I've been recording for years, um, nonstop, more or less, from the time that I began recording I Get Wet, the first Andrew WK album, to now. There's really been no official stop or official end to the recording process. A lot of the songs that appeared on my first album, I Get Wet, and also on my second album, or the second Andrew WK album, The Wolf, those were all written at the same time. They were all created as part of an, uh, an initial body of work that we were able to rely on and use to do everything that we've done or do everything that we did between 2000 and 2004. And that was a, an amazing time. Uh, the material that was created there, the, 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 the times that were had, the experiences I had, as a singer, as a songwriter, as a songwriter, <laughs> as a performer as well, those were amazing times. And I'm very grateful now to, to be here. I'm very grateful now to be, I am glad to be Andrew WK and I'm glad to be here with you and I'm glad to be here with the new albums. Next question. <laughs> Wait, what about, what about like, <laughs> okay. We, we pass on the mic maybe. Yeah. No, no, no offense. Any, anybody who doesn't get their question answered, anybody who doesn't get their question answered, please just come find me a uh, time when it's off the mic or off the record or whatever you would call it. Find me anywhere and I'll, I'll, I'll try to talk straight to you. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm in a, a juggle, I'm juggling right now. Okay, imagine me as a court jester juggling different balls. I got a bowling ball on one hand, I got a chainsaw on the other. The bowling ball could hit your head, it could cause a concussion. The chainsaw could chop your head clear off. That's the end of everything. So I'm, 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 I got my fans on one side, I got my supporters, I got my believers, I got my business partners, I got my family, I got my closest, 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 closest human beings on the other hand. I'm trying to manage both sides here, so just put yourself in my situation. Next question. Anybody else have a, a question they want to ask? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully this should be a softball. Um, are we ever going to see any Andrew WK music in Guitar Hero or Rock Band? Well, thank you for asking that. Yes. Rock Band and Guitar Hero, two great video games that have come out recently. And I've been a big fan of both of those. I, w I was just watching the movie uh, Couples Retreat. This is a great movie here. It stars Vince Vaughn and Kristen Bell. And Kristen Bell is from Michigan, my home state. She's a, a beautiful petite blonde. And she's got a very stoic character. She's strong and confident, yet also very malleable and flexible. And she starred in this movie with Vince Vaughn, who's a very outsized character, a larger man, a man of, of, of larger stature. And you can only assume what that means in the, the rest of the uh, physical area. And when you couple those two into one movie, it creates a sexual dynamic. It creates a... I'm just trying to be straight. This is a very simple answer. I'm trying to give a, a straight, straight question. It's a very straight situation where you got a, a larger sized man, a smaller sized woman appearing in a... In a, in a, in a, in a, in a <laughs> In a, in, a, in a marquee motion picture, a motion picture that the studios are going to push out there. And they're asking for us to be stimulated. They're saying, folks, whether you're in a committed relationship, whether you're married, whether you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend, the fact is stimulation is what makes the world go round. we got to stay stimulated. Here's a movie being put out there by Hollywood. It's called Couples Retreat. It's going to stimulate you. Why not check it out? This is my experience with the movie. I was stimulated by the movie. There. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking about that. Couples Retreat.
Hi, Andrew. Um, I played with you a couple years ago through rock school. I don't know if you remember that. It was the Electric Factory in Philly. Uh, you opened for the Butthole Surfers and stuff. And you said something to me that was really inspirational, because I really look up to you, and um, now I feel like a dork asking you this question. So um, I, there's this girl that I'm really good friends with. And... Um, <laughs> Awesome. Um, and I really like her. And it's, it's like that. And I can't say anything because then she won't be friends with me anymore because I'm creepy and I got a beard and it's, it's weird. And um, yeah, she's a little younger than me. But um, <laughs> she's not now. Um, yeah, she's, she's two years younger than me. Anyway. Um, dude, should I just stop? Should I? I? Should I tell her how I feel? Or should I not say anything and save the friendship? Or should I go for it? Or should I give the mic to someone else and make everyone stop yelling? Thank you. Well, when it comes to relationships, it's always a tricky situation. It's a very delicate situation. There's many, many factors to take into account. First of all, your beard. Absolutely, absolutely. As you yourself said, the beard, the long hair, the hygiene in general, is always going to, I mean, as an aside, thank goodness the questioning has moved into this realm because this is an area I feel very confident discussing. This is a, a line of questioning I feel very experienced with sharing. I've had dirty fingernails. I've had a lot of uh, hangnails, um, just sort of black bacterial buildup underneath the nail bed. And I read recently that that is a, a deal breaker for a lot of girls. Like if they see blackness in the fingernail or region, they might just cast you aside. So I pray, I bow down and pray to you and not only you, but your love interest that you find something beyond fingernail dirt, that you find something beyond hygiene, that you find something to connect upon that goes beyond even ideas, beyond beliefs, beyond concepts, beyond interstitial thoughts. I hope that you find someone to love that you relate to on a primal level of such severity that you don't even question your likes, your tastes, your dislikes, your looks, your hygiene, your fingernails, anything else. You relate to this person on such a deep level that dirty fingernails is just like icing on the cake. So thank you for asking that question. Now I'd like to turn it over. Anybody else have a, a question they'd like to ask? We have the same shirt, but different questions. <laughs> How much money do you spend on clothes? Okay, well, thank you for asking that. What, what's your name, sir? Stefan. Stefan, thank you for asking that question. That's a very good question. I'm gonna be very straightforward and honest, as is the theme with tonight. I have spent in the last, well, since 2005, until now, 2010, I have spent approximately $150,000 on clothing. <laughs> this is not supposed to be comical. It's not something I'm proud of. It, it's a very personal endeavor that I've been influenced. My father, uh, my father has a taste in clothing that steers him towards tailor-made suits, towards high thread count fabrics, towards custom-made creations. And I am my father's son. I am my father's creation in that same way. And I cannot deny that I've been attracted to the same kind of tailoring. Uh, I don't know, if, I'm not, this, this is something I, I, I did not talk about this for years. When I first moved to New York, the first job I ever had was working at a very high-end clothing company called Comme des Garçons, or Comme des Garçons, or Garcons. <laughs> it, 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 it depends how you pronounce it. It's, it's a French word, it's, French, it's a French phrase, but the, the point is I sought out this position and I moved to New York and got this job working in a, what most people would consider an experimental fashion company. Uh, in the office, I was making photocopies. I made some magnets for the fridge and stuff like that. But most of the job was kind of dull and boring, which is why I quit or was fired, depending how you look at it. 
And now I find myself here. So I can say that at the end of the day, I'm very glad that I didn't continue my work in fashion, clothing, style. Fashion, clothing, style and, style and image because I would not be here talking to you and answering your question had it not been for the choices that I made. But with all that being said, I really like fashion. I love the idea of wearing clothes because it's like a second skin. It's a way you can look different. If you wear a different outfit and you go and see your friends, they might not even recognize you. Some of the dates I've been on in here in New York City, I wore a baseball cap and people thought they were on a date with a, uh, they thought they were on a, on a blind date. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, anybody else have a question? Hi, Andrew. Yes. Just a quick question. Um, back in the day, you did a cover of the Mickey Mouse Club March that my three-year-old son and I rock out to all the time. Uh, I was just curious, do you have any other cover songs in the works or that you may be thinking of doing and putting on an album? Thank you for asking that. Yes, I did record a version of the Mickey Mouse Theme Club March. That's the M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-C, -E Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Wow, well, you guys are very savvy. Yeah, because Do Donald Duck did have a rivalry with Mickey Mouse that was more or less centered around the theme song. So he used the opportunity for the call and response to say his own name. So you guys are very savvy. I'm sure Walt would be rolling over his, in his grave right now in a, with a sigh of satisfaction. Walt Disney remains a big inspiration for me, and uh, he, uh, yes. Cover songs, cover songs. It's always interesting to perform someone else's song, whether it's a song written uh, on behalf of the Walt Disney Corporation or whether it's a song that, that some other songwriter writer has written. Writ, whether it's a song writ, written, songwriter has written it for someone else to sing. That is just as good. Does anybody have another question? <laughs> yes, sir, please make your way to the microphone. And you can ask your question, everybody can hear you. Hi, Andrew. Hello, how are you? My name's Gideon. Yes, hello, Gideon, how are you? Um, I live in a three bedroom apartment and um, my roommate is moving out. It's a nice room if you were looking for a place. Um, there's a big TV and like a good stereo system, we have a Wii. So if you were looking for like a room to live with and some cool guys, I mean, we're pretty cool. Are you um, interested? We were thinking about going Craigslist, but you know, that's kind of sketchy. <laughs> so um, what, I guess what I'm asking is, do you want to live with me? You don't have to decide now. I mean, you kind of do, because he's oh, moving oh, One second. <laughs> Gideon, thank you very much for your question. As far as living with anybody else, I have a very fine home with my wife, and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself very much. I knew I, it. I'm, 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 I'm set up, I'm accounted for, and I, I am spoken for, and I appreciate you asking me. There's nothing else of me on offer for you or for your roommates. <laughs> And I am enjoying myself living here in New York City, where I've lived for the last 12 years. And I'm very happy to remain here for the next year, for the next, for the next years that I stay here in, in, in de, indeterminate length. Thank you for your question regarding that. And anybody else have a question? Thank you. I meant like the guy. Oh, right there? Anybody else? It's open. I mean, as soon as this is done, it's done. I'm very happy. I'm gonna, I have posters and, and gifts for you guys. I, as soon as it's done. Hello. Hello, how are you? How are you? I'm good. Yes. Um, 
I was wondering, why haven't you performed live with your full band in the past five years? Say that, say that again, please. Why haven't you performed uh, live with your full band in the U.S. in the past five years? Mm, yes, okay. Thank you for your question. Um, he asked, why have I not performed with my live band in the last five years? It's a very good question. First and foremost, I have performed with my, la my live band. I have. Okay. <laughs> I have. <laughs> yes, yes. I have performed with my live band in the last five years. In fact, within the last year, I had performed two shows with my full band. One was in uh, at Clark University. It was a private college show. Yeah, Clark University! <laughs> and, the, and the other show was uh, a Canadian show that was not open to the public and we were not headlining, but this show coming up on March 16th, we will be playing. Andrew WK will be playing March 16th at Irving Plaza, the Fillmore, New York. My first full band performance in over five years. I will be here and I'm very excited about it. So thank you for asking that. I have to use the restroom very quickly. Okay. So uh, we have time. I brought, uh, just really quick before I use the restroom, I brought the one and only copy of my two CD new album, Close Calls with Brick Walls, Mother of Mankind. And this two CD copy comes out on March 23rd in the U.S., and this is the one and only copy in the United States. Shrink wrap still. So when I come back from the restroom, it'll just be five seconds, I just got a number one. It'll be very quick, just pure fluid. No solids will be passed, and I will give out this CD, double CD set, to someone in the, in the audience. So just give me one second. Uh, just turn the house music on for just, 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 just a few seconds. I've got to pee very badly, and, and I... Make a quick phone call, so just hold on one second. Thank you. Um, Let's go right back to the questions. Thank you for your patience. Hi, hi, hi. Andrew. My name is also Andrew. Okay, Andrew, yes. Um, my question is this. While, while I understand that you have various interests to protect and promises that you've made, Thank you. um, I want to try to ask a question that won't be too complicated for you to answer. So I'm going to try to make it a yes or no question. While you have various collaborators, that seems apparent. Are you the person who's sitting on the stage right now, the voice that you're about to answer my question with, is that the same voice that has appeared on the three Andrew W.K. albums? Good question. Thank you. Thank you for your question. You may be seated. You can pass the mic on. Thank you. Anybody else? One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, to answer your question, thank you very much for asking it. Uh,
To answer your question, I, I am Andrew W.K. I am the same Andrew W.K. that has been here from... I am the same Andrew W.K. that has been here from the beginning. I am the same Andrew W.K. that you have seen on all the albums. I am the same Andrew W.K. that has existed and performed for you at all concerts and appearances, including this one. I... I am the same Andrew, I am, I am Andrew W.K. I am the same Andrew W.K. that has appeared through, at, at all Andrew W.K. related appearances. Thank you, next, next question, thank you. Hey Andrew, I'm Louis. Hey. Yes, hello. Hi. Um... I love the look, and I was curious uh, how you feel the role of dirt and grime plays into the development of maybe your image, or if you feel uncomfortable with that, the development of, let's say, like subcultures in general. I feel not uncomfortable about any question, so that's just as comfortable as any other question for me. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Yes, sure. dirt and grime. Well, uh, dirt, as it's most commonly known, filth. Uh, non-hygienic, unhygienic practices. I've been very familiar with that. The, the first time I ever went without bathing for more than one week was on tour. And I experienced uh, a period of non-bathing for approximately 24 days. Um, I'm, it's not something I'm proud of. It was something that happened that it was uh, two consecutive runs of 12 shows. So 24 shows total, about a month. Um, I developed boils and a rash, and Epsom salts was the relief for me. If you create a very hot bath with Epsom salts, you could get them at any drugstore, any kind of convenience store, any pharmacy. It comes in a box that looks like a small chocolate milk box. It, it is a small box with a spout, and you pour it into a hot bath, and the calcium, the Sodium, the different elements that are there present in the Epsom salts are able to cure any kind of unhygienic practices. Thank, thanks for asking that. Any questions? Does anybody have a, Yes. No, go ahead, sir. Thank you. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm, I'm well. I, I'm another Lou, and though I don't have as awesome facial hair as this one, I think I have as an awesome of a question. Andrew, if, if you were a hurricane, what category hurricane would you be? What category hurricane? Okay, that's a great question. What category hurricane would I be? That's an easy one. Um, I don't even have to look at this. Uh, thank you very much for that question. That's an easy one. Thinking about hurricanes, well, hurricanes are a very disturbing, very powerful moment in, in Mother Nature. And we have seen hurricanes wreak havoc on all sorts of cities around the world. Of course, the most that comes to mind for me is Hurricane Katrina with New Orleans. And I would like to extend my greatest sympathy and my greatest support to the people of the New Orleans community and the people of the victims of Hurricane Katrina and all those that ha has affected around the world and in the US. I would like to extend my gratitude. I would like to extend my most sincere sympathy and I would like to extend my most sincere sympathy and solidarity to all the people there in, of New Orleans who are struggling in this time where they've been in, uh, attacked or upset. I remember September 11th, 2001, New York City was attacked. And this is something similar where a city is called upon itself to do its very best. And in moments like this, we wonder, is it right to laugh? Is it right to make light of such an experience? Is it right, is it right to find entertainment in an experience such as this or any uplifting feeling? And I would say, yes, it is right. For someone who has been here on September September 11th, 2001, I would like to say that New Yorkers have a solidarity with the people of New Orleans for all that they've gone through and that we can be here together today and say we have made it through and we will continue. We 
continue. Anybody else have any questions? Hi, Andrew. Hello, um, how are you? I'm a longtime listener, first time caller. And I saw you in uh, 2002 when I was a freshman in college in Rochester, New York. Yeah. Um, yeah. Water Street Music Hall. I was front row. And as you were like doing your thing and shaking your hair around, I noticed that it smelled a little bit like Pantene. So my question is, do you use like Pantene Pro-V general? Do you use like a shampoo and conditioner combo? Like how do you keep your long hair so luxurious and beautiful and a city as materialistic as this? What, are, what is your hair care process? That is a like great question. Thank you so much. Excellent, excellent question. Perhaps the best question tonight so far, what do I use for my hair care? I am a big proponent of not using shampoo, not using can conditioner of any kind. I say, why wash your hair? Why clean your hair when you can treat your hair? When you can treat it to an experience of enrichment, of annoyments, when you can give yourself a, a bath of enrichment, of enabling, basically. When you can enable your hair to not partake in any kind of destructive behavior, but when you can enable your hair to indulge itself in rich, healthy, natural human oil, okay? So here's a situation where everything we've been told, it turns out to not be true. We've been told to wash our hair once a day, maybe even twice a day. Some of my friends wash their hair three times a day. They're taking three showers a day. Now, some people might call them paranoid, maybe a little obsessive compulsive, they're cleaning themselves too much, but I say, hey, you know what? They just had the wrong lesson. They learned the wrong rule at school. Turns out, you gotta only wash your hair once every six months. Six months with shampoo, that's all it takes. Because what you wanna do, you wanna let your hair build up its natural oils. The natural oils that your body produces are the best, the most healthy, the most enriching elements that you, you could ever put on your hair. So any shampoo, conditioner, leave-in conditioner, after rinse conditioner, anything you could buy on the store shelves, your body's already producing it. Already producing it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, cool. That was good. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, 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 sir. Hello. Um, I'm Peter. Uh, I actually... Related to that question, I have shampooed twice this year, uh, and I feel great. I've been shampooing once a day, every day for my entire life, and I stopped. Shampooed twice this year. Yes! It's been two months. It's awesome. Twice this year, you hear that, right? <laughs> but, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, but my question uh, is actually related to music, uh, which is exciting. Uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, listening to your music, obviously, you know, it's based on a lot of very like primal kind of simple not not in a I'm not trying to sound condescending at all because in fact although it is simple it's also like nothing else I've ever heard so what I was wondering is what pieces besides the 12 notes that you can use in music and any given amount of chords that you can use in music makes a certain amount uh, a certain combination of sounds an Andrew WK song so to speak Thank you for your question. Um, to answer that in a brief way, so we can continue moving. Around 1998, 1999, I myself made a decision to change my outlook on the world from one of anger, resentment, general misanthropy towards the entire human species I decided to shift that into a pro-human point of view. And I, I, I had wanted to do that for many years, but it took something bigger than me, a cause bigger than myself, to motivate me to sign up for the actual undertaking of transforming yourself or doing whatever it is that I did. So. The fact is, I wanted to feel more up uplifted, I wanted to feel more happy, and Andrew WK was a way for me to do that. It was a way for me to do that. That was great. 
That, that's all right? <laughs> all right. All right. Okay, next, next, next question then, in that case. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm, Good I'm to see Scott. you, thank you. Thank you. Um, so as someone who's had some interesting experiences with the music industry, to say the least, what advice do you have for someone like me who wants to spend the rest of their life working within the industry? Well, <laughs> another easy question. Thank you for that. Um, I have been educated enough, even at my very young age, to understand that the only time any one of us can be truly successful is when we set our minds upon a very specific dream or goal that appeals to us in such a, such a way that it's almost second nature. So when someone says, what makes you want to get up in the morning? What makes you want to get out of bed and do something other than sleep all day? That's when I think, okay, whatever it is that gets you out of bed, that's got to be some kind of primal instinct within you. It may not be my desires or my dreams, or it may not be anybody else's here's desires or dreams, but if it's your desire and dream, I say, commit to it, go for it, and run full steam ahead. And out of all the mind-blowing and baffling experiences I've gotten to have so far in my young life, I can say the one lesson I've learned from all of them has been to approach every experience with a humble sense of humility at the... 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 the, the infinite expanse of what really is going on. I mean, I... I, I basically want to say I have no idea what's going on. And if any of you do, more power to you. But for anybody else who's in my shoes, and doesn't really have any idea what's going on. I think that's the right mindset to take. Commit to it. We have no idea, or only the slightest idea what's going on. Approach every experience in life, every person, every place, everything, with that same sense of possibility, of imagination, and, and that would be a good thing to, to think about. Does anybody else have any questions? Tonight, and, 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 and once, quick, quickly, I have one copy. This is the only copy of my new album in the United States. It's a two CD set. Mother of Mankind is one disc. Close Calls with Brick Walls is the other disc. I have one and only copy. I mean, I, I don't even have a copy of this. This is the one copy that was sent to me to approve, and it's here. And I also have a... I have a t-shirt here, I'm gonna give away to someone here. This is, uh, I have one, only one. One t-shirt here, and then uh, I have some posters here. And I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna autograph these posters for anybody who wants one after this Q&A portion is done. There's a time for us to meet and talk one-on-one -on -one and I can take pictures or autograph these posters or whatever you want. I, I, I'll give away at the end of this talk, this t-shirt and this, this album to a lucky winner. So before we get to the next question, I just wanted to announce that. We have a few more minutes though to take some questions. Anybody else have a, a question? I also wanna take a few questions from anybody watching on the computer. Anybody who's watching this on their computer, um, feel free, we should at least take one question from the computer. Um, hi. I wanted like a, a woman to ask a question, and then Hi. you can and then you can go. No, that doesn't count. Yeah, so pass the mic to a lady, and then we'll have you ask, and then and, and we'll continue on. There she goes. Um, my question is that I know that you use Twitter. Yes, I've I've been on the Twitter program. Yes. Um, and my boyfriend talks to you on Twitter more than he talks to me at my home. I apologize. I, no worries. And I was just wondering if you ever actually answer your fans on Twitter. Yes, well, t thank you very much for your question. Do I ever answer my fans on my Twitter account? Now, I have uh, twitter.com slash AndrewWK, all one word. I was fortunate enough to get that from Twitter. The, the folks there, they gave me that account and I have made the most of it. It's an incredible experience. I wonder, will there be a day when, when we don't talk to each other, even like this, where I don't see you, where I could touch your face, I could 
smush your face. <laughs> Meaning, there's the t for example, if we're writing each other on the computer and we're using electronic mail, I cannot reach out and mush your cheeks. Yeah, I cannot. It's impossible to do. But tonight, I could reach out, I could poke you in the eye, I could jam my thumb in your ear, I could soften your cheeks, I could do whatever I wanted because you, we're all in a three-dimensional space. So sometimes I have wondered what it would be like someday in the event that we don't have that three-dimensional material existence and if someday we're only communicating over programs like uh, the, 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 the Twitter. And the Twitter has been great for me. I've enjoyed it. I've made the most of it. I've tried to, for me, it's always been about accessibility. That's why I'm here tonight. I don't want to be removed. I don't want to be missing. I don't want to be a wall when you guys are here looking for me. So that's why I'm here tonight. That's why I showed up here. I wanted to respond to people that had questions for me, that wanted to see me. And, I, and, and always with, with Andrew WK, part of the spirit of this is that we're here to talk to each other. Twitter, the Twitter program on the computer is a great example of a, of a, of an opportunity that, of an opportunity that technology gives us to connect. And I take advantage of that opportunity and make the best of it that I can. Today and in, today and into the future. Anybody else have any other questions? Yes, I have a question. <laughs> yes, another, oh, well, before you go, you have to pass the mic to the young man because I, I had asked for a young woman oh. to ask, and she did, and, and now we got to have that young man ask his question, and, and then you. Okay. So just, just pass it back to him, and then you'll be next, if you don't mind. I, I, I do appreciate your understanding. Thank, thank you so much. We're just trying to balance it here with both energies, the feminine and masculine. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Andrew. Yes. Um, I liked your collaboration with Marty Friedman, and I was wondering how that uh, came about and what that was like. Yes, Marty Friedman is the ex-guitar player, the lead guitar player from a band called Megadeth! Yeah, it's a big deal. It really is, for me as well. And I was fortunate enough to meet Marty Friedman, the ex-lead guitar player of Megadeth in Japan, where he has since moved. He's made himself a citizen of Japan. He speaks Japanese, he reads Japanese, and lo and behold, he writes in Japanese. He has his own column in a very popular Japanese music magazine. And I've uh, met him since I first started going over to Japan to do my own music in 2001, and I met him and he was very nice to me. And we decided to work together. And my managers thought, hey, wouldn't this be a great opportunity to make the most of Japan with someone like Marty Friedman who's made himself such a fixture in the Japanese culture. Because really, we, it's always the goal to the Western philosophy, the Western culture. The United States of America has a philosophy that we want to imprint upon the rest of the world. And we want to, uh, without doing it necessarily very aggressively, we want to offer our point of view to the rest of the world. And I'm very happy that Japan has responded to our point of view and has been able to embrace this point of view because I, like so many people, agree that the potential for ultimate freedom, possibility, liberty, and light is the divine right of all human beings. And we are here to promote that throughout the world. Japan has embraced it, so thanks to Japan. Okay, that's the answer to that. Anybody oh. else have a question? Yes, uh, yes. I have a question. Yes. Okay. Please stand up. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm a rather new fan of yours. My boyfriend got me hooked onto your music. Um, Joe. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, when I first heard your music, my first reaction was yum yum. So I wanted to know if you know that you're yum yum. And I also wanted to know if I could have those papers when this is finished that you're reading from. Yes. Uh, <laughs> First of all, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for in introducing your friend, your girlfriend, uh, a friend who My is pleasure. a girl. Um, we've, uh, we've struggled a bit over the years with a, a largely masculine following with Andrew WK, and I'm extremely grateful to have the feminine influence playing a part in Andrew WK. Really, let's give it up for all the women in the world!
Pardon me. Thank you. So yes, uh, I'm very glad to have uh, a more feminine in, in, in involvement in, in, in any, anything I do. Uh, um, so yum yum. Uh, I'm. We have tried many different ways to introduce this feeling to all different kinds of people, boys, girls, men, and women, because there is a difference between a boy and a man and a woman and a girl. And we want everybody, we want everybody to feel part of this party because this is a party for the human race, not any one particular member of the human race. And we want to be able to relate to all members of the human race, whether they're boys or girls, men or women, whatever color, whatever gender, whatever persuasion, this is a celebration where we blow our own minds, where we are shocked to see that that person is at our party. How can that person be at this party? Wait, that person's allowed at this party? Yes, everybody's allowed at the party that I've started. So if you're gonna take part in it, be prepared. Yeah, thank you. Ne next question, please. Next, we got a few more minutes here. I'm gonna give out some prizes here. Anybody else? Hello. Yes, hello, please stand up. Rise yourself. Rise up. Oh, yes, Joe. Hi. Yes, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Um, I just wanted to say that with all the different conspiracies and whatever there is, um, it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it really doesn't matter to me, you know, who, who played Andrew WK or who was on this record or who was doing that. I understand that it, it, it can definitely spark a lot of curiosity, but... <clears throat> I just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you very much for everything that you've done um, over the past 10 years, uh, as far as I get wet, the wolf, close calls, EPs, anything. And my question is um, if, if, I could, if I can give you a gift. A gift? Yes. Please. 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 Please, just pass it on up. If you have a gift for me, that's a... That's a I mean, that's a special moment. Uh, now, may I ask in advance, is there anything that I could get a, an infection from? Not quite. Uh, no? I'm allergic to bacteria and viruses. All right, let's see here. What is this, a pb and It's a party. Can there? We got a CD here, too? Oh. Well, you got wheat bread or whole wheat? Well, white bread or sourdough? It's a Wonder Bread PB&J? Oh, thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for this sandwich. I'm just going to leave this for later. Let's put it right there. And I think we have time for a few more, maybe two or three more questions before I'm going to make my way down to, to you and and sign posters and give away this t-shirt and the CD. Andrew, it's Fallon. I have, I'm getting a couple questions from the, from the computer. Oh yes, from now Fallon, <laughs> just a moment. Fallon has been operating the online portion of this event tonight. We have, a, of course, this is our town hall. Yes, thank you Fallon, thank you. Thank you. This is an open format Q&A, question and answer, town hall. And of course, some people have been sending in questions on the computer to ask tonight live. Yes, so on behalf of the Justin.tv viewers, I have a couple questions. Okay, yes. Are you playing Download Festival in the UK this year? Yes, the Download Festival. That is, uh, I, I've heard of this festival for many years. Uh, as far as I am aware, and that is just one person, meaning one person out of many, involved in this, I, I myself am not aware that we're playing it, but I want to make it very clear because this has happened before. We very well could be playing it. And I'm just not aware of it yet. So in the case that we are, I'm very excited to be playing it. If we're not, then please ask us because I would love to play it. And if not this year, certainly another year. So thank you. Yes, Download Festival, a great, there's, great fest. There's a couple people on from the UK and they want to know when you're coming back to the UK to do some performances. Yes, uh, for all those folks out there in the United Kingdom, thank you always for your incredible support. I, uh, my, my, the I Get Wet album was first released in the UK. Uh, my first show ever with my full band was in the UK. That's 
Never, I'll never forget that. I will be back to you sooner than later. Uh, it could be as soon as the next few weeks, uh, really. Um, in case you couldn't tell, a lot of what is going on with me is sort of fly by the seat of the pants. We are making it up as we go along and trying to manage this as it comes up. So I look forward to coming back to the United Kingdom, to London, to England in general, and I'll see you there. And one last question is, who is Steve Mike? No, no, no. Um, um, we, we, we were doing so good. <laughs> We, we had made it through. <laughs> this event had been booked a long time ago for me, uh, a long time ago and as far as my timeline is concerned. Three months is a long time for me, so this was booked a long time ago, and, and of course, when we booked it, we were aware of all the, the potentialities that were brought into play making it open to the public. I mean, when you, originally we were gonna do this as a, a press conference where just the press was invited, where just people uh, from journalism were allowed to partake and ask questions and whatever else. But um, I take responsibility. I decided about uh, two months ago to make it open to the public, to reduce the ticket price, make it a very, just like a low key event, not a big, high pressure event for my own sake i didn't want it to be a big high pressure event uh my 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 story my my story is uh, my story is very simple. My story is very simple in that as a young person who moved to New York, New York City at that tender age uh, that I'm sure most of you here have been 18 before. How many people are here are 18? Okay, well that's good. No, that, that's good. That's good. That's good because uh, if you're not 18, then you understand. You remember how intense it was to be 18. I moved to New York City from when I was 18 years old from Michigan, and that was a big step for me. And the things that happened once I moved here, I could not have anticipated. I could not have planned for. I am still learning, or I'm still reacting to what happened to me at 18. If you remember, okay, this is, this, this is a good example. If you remember when you were a freshman in high school, you remember that the idea of those four years, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, those four years of high school, that measurement of four years became very powerful. And for me, I haven't really gotten over that. Uh, I'm, I'm still looking back at high school. I still remember, this still feels to me like coming off of high school, the ideas, the hopes, the dreams, the fantasies even, the fantasies that I had as a high school student, those are still fresh in my mind and I'm, everything since, 99 or 98 when I moved to New York City, 99 when I signed up to do Andrew WK, everything since then is a bit of a blur, okay? I admit that. It's a bit of a blur, but I am, we, we were not prepared, I was not prepared to, to answer questions like that. When, Steve, my, Steve, on my first album, I Get Wet, Steve Mike was the executive producer. This is the name of the producer that appeared on my third album, Close Calls or Brick Walls, which will be released on March 23rd, 2010, were we releasing it? I, 
I, I am, I, I, everything, everything that, everything that, everything that's happened since I get wake, everything that happened since I get wet came out, I take responsibility for, okay? I'm not trying to blame anybody else. Everybody that I worked with, I chose to work with, okay? People should understand that. Steve, Mike, or anybody else, any other group of people that I chose to work with, I chose to work with. The, the problem is some people have thought, some people have, have accused me of being a fake person or there's a fake Andrew WK that replaced the real Andrew WK. That's not true. Just because someone signed up for something to, or, or takes advice or has managers or works, or, or works in entertainment or show business with other people doesn't mean they don't have a brain, okay? Doesn't mean that they're not a real person. And I am here tonight, I, I wasn't sure, if, we, we weren't, I wasn't sure if it was gonna come to this. And I'm here now to say I'm a real person and that, that anything that says other, anything that says contrary should be ignored. And that, I, songs like Party Hard, are meant to make people happy. Songs like Party Hard were written by, by, <laughs> songs like Party Hard were written to make people feel good. Songs like Party Hard were written to make people feel in touch with their greatest potential. The greatest potential of humanity is to reach their, their full potential where you're able to realize your full potential as a human being, as an individual, to do what you want to do, to reach out and to follow your true will. This was the vision that I was presented with as a young person by my family and by the people that supported me. I am here to bring it to you now and, I am here to bring it to you now and to say that I am a real person, that Andrew WK is the same as it's always been. That's, that should be ignored. The, the point of this is to look out into the world with a sense of optimism, with a sense of possibility, with a sense of purpose, with a sense of, of, of power that you can make your dreams come true, that you should never assume to know anything about anything, whether it's me or anybody else, but that you can look out into the world with a sense of potential and harness it to make, to make our dreams come true. And, 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 and you, is anybody else? Does, any, does anybody else have any? I have a question for you, Mr. WK. Um, okay, so whenever I, uh, whenever Andrew WK comes up in conversation, this will be the last, last, last question. I, uh, I, I know, but I mean, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have plenty of time to talk to everybody on one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just, I'm, I, we're told a quarter to ten is supposed to stop, so. Uh, then I'll have time to sign posters. I have, I have posters for everybody. I, does anybody want a poster? Woo! All right. So I, I have posters and I have this CD. There's one copy of the CD. It comes out next month. And then there's one t-shirt. So this will be the last question and then... <laughs> Are you ready? Are you sure? So when Andrew WK ever comes up in conversation, the first thing I ever think about is that, that striking pose on your first album cover with the bloody, bloody nose. And uh, Dave Grohl came out publicly and said how he thought you were the sexiest man, the, the sexiest image you've seen of a man. So there's a rumour going on in the UK that, uh, well, basically I ask you this, did you have sex with Dave Grohl? <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you, thank goodness. And, and thank you for your question. No, I did not have sex with Dave Grohl. He's a great man, a, a, an incredible musician, incredible drummer, incredible vocalist, guitarist as well. Uh, incredible frontman who's shown me so much kindness from the very beginning of my career up until even now. And I, I, I say thank you to him and, and to them, Crooked Vultures and Foo Fighters and Nirvana and, and everything that he's been a part of. But, um, but no, to answer your question, I did not have intercourse with him. Um, <laughs> But, but, but th that's, a, that's a very easy question to answer, fortunately. So thank you for that. Is that all? Can we, do you want to move on to the next? To the one more, one more. Okay, one more. I got, I got the mic now. Hey. <laughs> I'm Steve. Um, 
You know, originally, originally I was going to uh, ask about your about your tattoo because I was always, you know, interested. But I think I have a better question. Um, how do I word this? Very, I have to be very careful. Um, can you please explain to me and, and everyone else the perfect way to party hard? Yes. <laughs> I, I thought that would be. I thought that would be easier for you to. Yes. Thank you, and thank you for that. Um, mm. The perfect way to party hard is to pay very, in my opinion, pay very close attention to the impulses that occur to you on a very regular and dynamic basis. The kind of impulse that makes itself known in those very clear moments when you say, I feel like shit, yet, if I could do this, I would feel great. I don't feel good, I'm bummed out, I'm depressed, yet, if I could do this, I would feel good. So those ideal moments in life, those ideal visions, those dreams that we hold above all other dreams or other hopes, those are what I would like us all to focus on. That's what I'm focusing on. I bow down to the gods in thanks, in humility, because they've allowed me to manifest so many of my dreams at such a young age, I can only imagine what they have in store for me or anybody else as we continue on. But I bow down to them and thanks because they've shown me that they exist by manifesting the dreams that I have had as a young child. So now to see my dreams, my childhood dreams, displayed before me much like a movie, I say everybody else here, Write your own movie. Write the life that you want to live. The hardest part about doing what you want to do is not doing it. It's believing that you can do it. And I am here. I live on this stage and exist as testament that anybody can do anything they want to do, no matter how ludicrous or absurd it seems to them or anybody else. And I bow down in thanks, in praise, in humiliation to the gods who make that miracle possible for me and everybody else. Thank you very much for being here. I will now come out and pass out posters, a CD, a t-shirt. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you, I, thank you, I, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys.